Okay, we'll figure out a way to pick it up. Huh? Hi, love. You got poopy feet. Hey, that's my arm. Poopy feet. Well, hi there. <laughs> I think so, look. Yeah. It's like right up in you, in your business. Yeah. Get him. <laughs> oh, here's the other one. Yep. <laughs> Let me spread you in the face. Okay. Um, right there. Oh, good catch. And right there. So both watermelons. Watermelons, yep. Okay. It is Saturday. What day is it? Do you even know? I no. have no idea. <laughs> is it like September 4th? 4th? That's pretty good that the person who doesn't have to pay attention to dates and times anymore remembers it better than the guy that has to work it every day. <laughs> so it's uh, Saturday, September 4th, and we're here bright and early. It's nice and cool. We want to get started because we have a lot to get done today. Uh, one of the things that Lori's been busy with this week that we're going to show you here in just a second has been ex uh, working on some of the tree rings and some other things. We need to give you an update on one of those things, but one of the other, other things that we did last week is we did harvest some of the cow peas. Up in the front. For the most part. There might be a few behind you, but most of them are gonna be right here. All right. So we've been shelling those here in the evenings and doing that kind of thing. Another thing that we did here last weekend is we planted some melons. We wanted to see whether or not we could utilize the nitrogen that we're getting from these cow peas behind me here, and we could get some melons planted in here, maybe get a melon harvest this fall. So we don't know whether or not we're actually, that'll actually work out for us, but we have cantaloupes and watermelons both planted in here, and that was last week, and I think today I found a couple of new sprouts. I'm gonna see if I can get those on camera for you real quick. Before I do that, I wanna show you a quick uh, clip of us getting these planted so you get an idea of what we did there. So we have two different types of melons we're gonna get into the ground and test out here in the fall. One is a sugar baby watermelon, that seemed like a good one to try because they're small. Hopefully won't take quite as long to ripen. The other one is a Hale's Best Jumbo Cantaloupe. So we got these seeds on Amazon. It's, they were really inexpensive. They were like a buck 50 for these little packs, which I thought was a pretty good deal. We'll see how they germinate. We're gonna see if we can get these in the ground today before some possible rain. We're kind of cloudy here today. There's a chance of rain here through the beginning of this week. We figured that would only help us here. One other thing, the challenge that we're finding here is the tremendous amount of quail pressure that we have. Now, when we planted the, this bed out, we had sunflowers and these cow peas in. We didn't have an issue with the quail coming into here. So I don't know if that's because of the chickens that are right here making a lot of noise um, or if it was something else, but we didn't have them attacking these newly sprouted seeds. So we're hopeful that if nothing else, we've got the cow peas in here that will help to protect these seeds while they germinate and start to come up. These are gonna plant out. You know what I mean? And obviously they're gonna to continue to grow over. So let's go ahead and take a peek real quick. I think we've got some new sprouts. Pretty sure we are not gonna get that on camera for you guys, we tried, but the point to this was we know that we have some issues with quail and other birds, quail in particular, 
attacking new starts like that. So what our hope is, is that we have the cow peas in here that are nice and green and that you really have a hard time seeing the new sprouts. So we're hopeful that that works out well. One other thing when it comes to the cow peas is they do, they do well during the summertime. That's not a problem but they're doing a lot better now that it cooled off. So, you know, that 110 plus, they really struggle a bit. Right now they have a lot of new growth on them. And we also notice that the back row of cow peas is very, very green. Also all the cow peas that are basically right up against all of our plant starts back there are the ones that are doing the best. So if they have a little bit of shade, they do a little better. Uh, I think they help to shade each other as they grow as well. We're noticing that in the raised beds. But I'll tell you what, Lori and I really enjoy having these cow peas here on the farm. They've done fantastic all summer. They've just chugged right through summertime. And we're starting to get really good harvest from them actually now, uh, especially dry bean harvest. So we have right now about two cups of dried beans and we have a whole lot still to harvest. I mean, I'm looking here, we probably have a, another cup or so that's ready to go now. And those of course just continue to do that. So another thing before we get started on the major project for this weekend is we had to do a little bit of work on one of our jujube trees. So we're gonna show you that here. So this is, I believe the Lang jujube. It's covered in small fruit. And one of the challenges that we had with this tree it's gonna be hard to pick it up on camera right now, but it basically had two trunks that were forming. Now, one of our experiences with trees that grow like this, this tree is growing very, very quickly. One of the things that we've run into in the past, in fact, with an Indian jujube, is we had a trunk like this that split. It literally cracked down the middle because they grow so fast. Normally, I wouldn't prune at all during the summertime. That's on purpose. All of this green leaf matter is what's driving energy down into the roots and having those roots expand out very quickly, which is what we want to get these trees established. So typically, I wouldn't do any summer pruning. Um, however, this week we did go ahead and cut the smaller of the two trunks off. And you can see the tree is doing great. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna come back cut the rest of the branching off from that second trunk and then just make sure we get this tree staked really well because it's a little bit floppy. Okay, so we got the bottom of this trunk protected. I think, you know, a couple feet, that might be a little bit too short, but I think the tree's big enough that it's not gonna have an issue with rabbits. Plus, you know what, the rabbits are nice and busy with all the weeds that we've got going on, so I think we're gonna be okay as that continues to grow. Wanted to show you really quick the fruit. So there is a piece of fruit that we are not gonna let actually ripen, but one of the things that I like about these jujube trees is they seem to put on fruit all summer, and these are fall ripening fruit. You know, one of the challenges we have with our fall ripening fruits here, and especially in the palm fruits, is they set in the spring. So they'll set nice and early, you know, April or so, March or April, but then they don't ripen until the fall and they've got to survive all the way through that summer kind of dieback that we get on the trees. And these jujubes are setting fruit now that will be ripe in the fall. You know, we're September, it's beautiful this morning. It's gonna be about 100 degrees today which I know for a lot of you out there is really hot. <laughs> for us here in Arizona, it's a little bit of a relief from 110 plus. But to see these fruit setting here, basically in the fall, to ripen in the fall and winter, that's a really good sign for these jujubes. We wanted to go ahead and uncage this other jujube, which is standing up straight on its own. We're not gonna stake this tree at all. Every single one of our jujube trees has been covered with fruit all summer long. This one you can see here, kind of a cool, shape, more of like a honey pot kind of looking thing. Probably a dozen fruit on this one branch and several of the larger branches, in fact, almost all the branching has new little tiny baby fruit on there. So jujube trees, my goodness, they are going nuts. 
So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna get busy on our main project for this weekend here in just a moment with you guys, but what I wanted to do, you guys know Lori's here full time. She was busy this week. We're gonna give you guys a quick shot of what Lori's been up to here on the farm. So we've had a couple people ask us how we deal with weeds and um, with all the rain that we've gotten lately, we've definitely gotten a lot of weeds uh, around the property and we don't spray at all, but we do manually try to control all the weeds um, the best we can, especially in certain areas like the front of the house, around the garden area, I do either pull it all by hand or with a scraper. And then in other areas around the property, we will either use the weed trimmer or a mower. Usually if it's down low on the ground, we just leave it. We don't worry about it. It's just when it starts getting a little too high, you can't see what's crawling around in there is when we usually will knock it down with, with one of the trimmers or mowers. Um, so yesterday I did go through and knock down the weeds in our east orchard. <laughs> So as you can see here, I just trimmed them all back. They were, as you saw, getting pretty tall and um, it knocks it down, cleans it up a little bit and that's fine for us. But today I need to work on one of the tree rings because we had a problem with some of the um, rabbits, birds coming in and kind of digging at the um, backside of the ring here where we have the water spigot. And so now water's overflowing coming out. So we still have this tree on the um, water going into the center ring that goes around the tree here. And we just had the sides here built up just a little bit so that overflow would come into this outer ring. So the berm on the outer ring is too shallow, so it's not high enough. So the water, instead of staying in here, it's overflowing outside of here. So I need to build up the outer ring. But as I'm in here, I have a lot of roots that are already out beyond the um, outer ring here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and close this off and then take some of this down a little bit so that it's just watering the outer ring on this tree now. All right, so I got that outer ring, the berm on that built up a lot better. Um, also the backside of the water spigot here. So I'll need to add some more rocks in there. We like to keep rocks in there so it, dirt doesn't get in there and um, clog anything up there. I'm gonna go ahead and get the water hose and just fill this with water just to kind of see if I have any low spots that I need to fix now before I cover it. So that actually filled up really good. A couple of spots out it kind of had stopped a little bit. I noticed under roots that I didn't want to dig the root out. So it was a little higher there, um, but it's sitting evenly in the ring here. So it's not like going to one side, falling back into here. So I'm happy with that. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and just cover it with the wood chips that I do have. And then again, we'll fill more in after we fertilize this month. Okay, sun's up, it's starting to get warm. We need to get going. So you guys know that September, or in case you don't, September is fertilizing month for us here in Arizona. You wanna make sure you're fertilizing your fruit trees here this month. For us, we like to do that here on Labor Day weekend, which is where we're at today. So we've got a few days in order to get it done. You know, we've got 170 fruit trees to fertilize here. That takes a while. <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and bring you guys along with the first couple trees that we get done here over in the Western Orchard. And we will be using our composted pig manure for those trees. So we're gonna bring you along for one or two and then I think we're just gonna work. Oh, wow. Yeah. That makes a big difference, holy yeah. cow.
so you can see what we're using here to fertilize the majority of the fruit trees on the farm is this composted pig manure. Probably gonna shoot a separate episode for you guys on fertilizing. We're gonna do a couple different tests again this time around like we always do, but the pig manure is quickly becoming one of our favorite things because we have it in fairly good abundance. Now, it's been all summer. This has basically been cooking out here in the sun in Arizona. You guys know we've had some rain, which is good. That's unusual for us recently, but we also keep it nice and moist. One of the things I wasn't too sure about was just having the wood chips as a covering and whether or not we'd have any life in the soil. Now, I'm not gonna dig my hand in here, but I, I saw several nice big worms. Honestly, they look like night crawlers, so I have no idea where those came from, but uh, they're here. And then, of course, we're taking all of this material, transplanting it onto the other side of the farm. That would include some of those night crawlers. So we're also transplanting that life. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take this wheelbarrow over to the other side and get those fruit trees fertilized. getting about mid-morning, I don't know, probably about what, 9.30 or so? So it's definitely about time to wrap it up for today. We got a couple other small projects that we wanted to do and we may try to get a couple of them done here real quick. Got a lot done this week. How was your week? You got your week number two of uh, freedom. How was it? <laughs> it was good. <laughs> yeah. Well, two of the days I didn't really do much here because I had to do stuff in town, but. Got feed for the broiler chickens. Yep, got all that done. And broiler chickens come in, uh, what? on Friday of this week, of this coming week? Thursday or Friday, they're supposed to ship on Wednesday. That's cool. So we've got, what do we have? How many broiler chickens did we order this time? 150. 150. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, 50% more than we've ever ordered before. Ideal yeah. poultry, so we should get, probably most of those will be alive when they get here because they're pretty good yeah. and right time of year. <clears throat> so with, I think this is, we have brought them in this early before and they did fine, so we're pretty confident that that won't be an issue, um, but we're gonna have to manage the quantity. <laughs> yeah, I was really hoping we could use the trailer, but and it's gonna be hot. Yeah, it's gonna be, can. no, too hot for that, but we'll be able to use a tractor on the pasture. So of course we have live stream with you guys today. So you guys know that we love spending time with you there. Obviously, if you're seeing this tomorrow, that was last night, so you missed it. <laughs> but uh, first Saturday, at least for now, we're still doing the first, just the first Saturday of the month at three o'clock Arizona time. So hopefully you guys were with us last night and of course we've got all of the fall activities going on so we've got uh, at least a workshop or two um, we want to try hopefully to get a couple mm -hmm. yeah hopefully a couple we want to try to get a tour in uh, hopefully in the fall if we can figure that out too um, so make sure you guys join our customer email list through the website um, so you guys are knowing when that's going to happen because we're going to limit um, how many folks come out we want to make sure we spend plenty of time with everybody that's important to us um, and then of course a lot of planting. We've got the gardening that we, garden beds we have to finish wrapping up here for the spring. Um, so all of the sweet potatoes and the cow peas. We also have all the fall beds that we need to get ready and prepared for planting. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So we've got planting we need to get in those um, here starting this month and then into October. Fertilizing, if you guys haven't done it already, um, this month is the month to fertilize. So. September, February, and May. And Labor Day is the easiest thing for us to remember to at least start fertilizing <laughs> on Labor Day weekend. Usually we finish, but I don't know, we'll try to push that too much this time. So after two weeks of being home and farming full time <laughs> with your vast amount of wisdom, what do you suggest to anybody else out there that's considering doing this after two weeks, after only two weeks? I think that if it's something, if you're in a financial situation where you're able to do it, then just do it. 
Well, would you say that it's for everybody? Probably not for everybody, no. Yeah. At this point, what would you say is the thing that surprises you most about being on the farm full time? How much there actually is to do. That I would agree. So, cause it seems like just you being in town twice instead of once this week kind of set us back on what we wanted, what you wanted to get done. Yeah, and I've done pretty good on, you know, I, I make a list um, of projects that I want to try to get done and I've pretty much gotten all of them. Yeah, it seems like you, you mm -hmm. tend to still keep up. Yeah. Just that half day having to come in at 9.30, 10 o'clock. Right. That's what's really rough right now, I think, is is limited on the time because by 9, 30, 10 o'clock, I'm just drenched, you know, dripping with sweat. and So it'll be nice when it's a little cooler. Yeah. Spend a little bit more time outside. What I'm looking forward to, though, is um, getting the fertilizing done and then we can fill in wood chips throughout the orchard rows. So I'm really looking forward to that because we've been talking about that for over a year now. Uh, yeah, well, we've been here for two years. We've been pretty much talking about those orchard rows mm -hmm. ever since. So I think that's going to pretty much wrap it up for us today. So really appreciate you guys being here. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. And definitely share the content. Both of those help us out here, especially with Lori being on the farm full time. Any questions or comments you guys know down in the comment section down below on our Amazon shop. Free and painless way to help support the channel. Our Amazon shop link is down below. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. What are you doing now? Well, they're kind of tight on my legs <laughs> when I sit like this. I'm getting distracted. <laughs> What do you suggest to anybody else out there that's considering doing this after two weeks? After only two weeks. Ding, ding, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so just wanna, I think a bug just went in my mouth. <laughs>